Okay, I'm back, recharged with fresh coffee. Um, so uh, we do have a situation here where we have a bunch of disrupted units. This guy is disrupted and he needs to go down, top priority. So what we're gonna do is we have these two uh, tanks here and they're gonna barrage. And uh, we're gonna just use the top symbol anytime I forget to declare a symbol. Uh, but I will use the diamond in this situation. And then uh, this other set of tanks is somewhere. There's one tank. But they need to be together. There's a tank here and a tank here, but they're not together, so they're not allowed to combine their barrages. So I think that's all I have is just one set of tanks over here. Uh, what about this one? Oh, there we go. There's our other one. So we're going to do a diamond and then a triangle, and we're trying to hit this. So first one is the diamond, and of course we get the triangle, but we do match the color, which uh, is going to be good enough to at least do a check. Because uh, we're matching the color only, we have to shift it left. Uh, we get the little asterisk, and that's all we're looking for. So we have the asterisk, and now this is where it's just a, a luck draw, but um, we drew a blue, and there enough, there's a match. So the fortress gets reduced. So this class three is actually destroyed. So that's awesome. Um, now, I can't actually continue my barrage. And here's why, uh, because this fortress is not revealed. So we have to do a normal attack against this unit to reveal the next fortress. We actually have to eliminate the unit. And um, so, uh, that's what we have to do here. And so, um, this guy here will do a normal attack against this, and this one will support, and then these two will support from range. And I think that's how we're going to resolve this. These two will move in to take orange here, and um, uh, we do have to draw a card because this guy does not have enough strength to uh, prevent uh, communication. So, of course, we draw a card, and then we're going to see if he hits us with fire. He doesn't hit us with fire, uh, but we have to take a unit now and do close combat with that unit. So, sorry I got sidetracked there, but we got to deal with this first. So, he's just getting one for Japanese. We have eight pips, so we get two. And then one for flamethrower, and it's gold. He goes first. Of course he hits us. That's what they do. Uh, we take a hit. We lose a card. And then we go. And he gets a reinforce. So that means he gets a card. Uh, we did not hit. Oh, and then he goes. He hits us, and he gets reinforced. Now, the reinforcement would give him a death marker in this case, but there are no death markers left, so he doesn't get any. But he does get a card, and we lose our last card. And um, this would have been actually a wonderful card for us. And so uh, we're going to withdraw, but it doesn't matter. And, oh, actually, we're not withdrawing. Because <laughs> um, when I said it doesn't matter, uh, I should have thought through that there is this event. So, you know, don't withdraw if uh, it doesn't help you. Um, but here's what's bad, is we now have a freaking unit here. And we took damage. And uh, he's now occupying that spot. I hate this rejuvenate rule. I just don't like it at all. Um, but I think that's the way it's supposed to be played. Um, all right, so now we're back to this. So I'm only going to use these two and then these to attack. Uh, actually, I don't need all that strength, but this is tripled. So this becomes a six strength unit, and it's an MG. And uh, the whole reason I'm attacking it is to reveal the fortification. Now, when you get to the second fortification level, this fortification level gets its own unit and its own death marker again. Now, since this unit was still alive, he is the unit for the fortification. So we don't draw a new unit for him. And there's no death markers left. So if there was one, we would draw it. But we don't have one in this case. So then we just reveal. And you can see we got a really nasty situation um, where it's a class one fort and it's completely surrounded um, and everybody gets disrupted and this unit doesn't even get attacked because um, he's in this new fort 
and it's basically everything's blocked and we can only attack it from this spot. That is awful. Um, but we do get disruption markers everywhere. Here and here. And this guy is disrupted. And we disrupted him too because he was in close combat. Um, so um, that hurts. But we still have one more barrage. Remember, we have the triangle barrage. So let's try it. And... There is a purple right next to him, so we do hit him when color. We don't hit him on the triangle, though. And um, if you remember the barrage, um, it's a six-strength barrage where we match the color only. We still do it. So let's see if we can get that uh, that level one fort, which was awful, uh, reduced here. And I drew a blue, and the blues match. And so that's really good news, because this level three fortress, or level one fortress, was brutality. Um, so this is destroyed. Well, it's knocked down a level, right? So we, um, we put it in the cup and then I have to draw a level two from the cup and we get this one and see, look, this one is more susceptible. This one doesn't have as many walls. So now we can attack it. So some of the walls have crumbled and we can attack it from other directions. Um, so I would love to attack it with just a three-strength barrage, but I can't. Um, uh, these guys are all going to be disrupted until next turn. These two lose disruption, but we've got to remember not to do anything with them. Uh, this unit here is a tank in the whole nine yards. And see, there's a bluff here, so we cannot go against this. Um, or we can't, like, close combat, but we can still attack him. We just can't close combat him. Uh, the other thing we can do is try to move into blue and take out this unit, which is going to be fair game. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to attack this fortress because we need to get it revealed. And this unit's going to help, and so is this one. So this is going to be a strength two times two is four. Uh, hold on. All right, so we'll do them one at a time. This is going to be two strength. It's divided in half because it's range attack, divided in half again because it's over a bluff. So that's a two strength. This one is only three pips. So divided in half, divided in half. He's going to offer one strength to this. Now let me zoom back out so you can see better. So uh, that's three strength total. This one's going to offer two and two, which is four more. Uh, so that's seven strength. And then we have 10 and, well, it's okay. Seven strength, this is three and eight is 11 and four is 15 and four is 19, but we have to cut it in half. So uh, that would be nine strength plus seven. We're at 16 strength. And then I'm gonna add uh, three of the fifth division artillery to get to 21 strength. So we're going up against this thing, 21 strength. Uh, this is a hilltop, uh, but it's not black. So uh, I think it's still just doubled strength. Oh, where are you? A black hilltop is triple, everything else is double. Okay, so it's doubled. Um, and then the uh, fortification itself uh, is a class one. So that means he's, um, uh, what, what's happening here? So I'm at 21 strength, he's doubling it, and he adds three strength of his own. So we reveal, and you can see we have a three. And we actually meet the requirements, a BT and a B FT and a bazooka, we meet that. He has three, this is doubled because of this, so it's six, and then he adds three more for nine. So we're at 21 to nine, which is 2.33, two and a third. So we're at basically, uh, we're at two to one odds, and we do meet the requirements. It has an unrevealed depth marker, 
and you can see it's a JX when there's an unrevealed depth marker, and that means that the depth marker is eliminated. So uh, we got rid of the artillery one, and this one was actually a real easy one to uh, get rid of. Um, uh, unfortunately, he's not disrupted. That's what I was hoping for, uh, but we did uh, hammer him pretty hard. Uh, and then, uh, if we could, I would like to barrage him, um, but we attacked him, so we can't do that. Uh, I don't have any tanks or anything left to do a barrage. Well, that's right, we attacked him. We cannot barrage him, Jeff. Just shut up and listen to yourself. Okay, so I think that's all we can do over here. Um, I do have units I want to move in and I want to do stuff with, but I can't. Uh, at least not at the moment. So uh, that's how we're going to have to end the turn. And um, it's the suppression from the artillery and the fact that these black zones get to keep firing at us that uh, makes this uh, a lot harder. Uh, but I'm generally happy with our progress there. I think the uh, number of reinforcement points we've spent has been through the roof. Um, these guys do have a range of five command post-wise, so... One, two, three, four. I mean, we're okay as long as there's HQs uh, and their papas. Um, so we do have a little bit of an issue here. One, two, three, four, five. But these are the 28th, and the 28th is in range of the regimental. We're still okay. I We're starting to get to the edge, but we're okay. And as long as the battalion HQ is somewhere in here, he's projecting a, a range of three more. Um so, okay, so now we uh, move on. We're done with our phase. I don't think there's anything else for us to do. Uh, obviously, I would like to move more units, but I'm already bottle jammed as it is. And um, we do the Japanese artillery fire phase. Uh, they are, sector one is down to six. So they're doing two thirds. So that means they have four points. And it's four points uh, divided by five, which means they do hit one unit. Um, and it's whatever unit's closest to black. So we gotta figure this out, and I'm already disrupted, so I can't like choose to disrupt a stack unless I'm gonna disrupt one of these stacks. Um, so I'm gonna take the loss with this blue unit here, which is a catastrophic loss. So the blue is now down to two steps. So that is an issue. Um, and I think I just need to get him out of there retreat um so uh we take that loss and nobody's disrupted which is important because i actually have a path to attack now here and then this one here is nasty um but we can now start barraging it and doing stuff to it um and so uh anyways we're done with that we moved to sector two um it's a divide by eight, and we've already determined that sector two can only hit one. So I'm not gonna do the math anymore. It's, it's um, we know it's disrupting somebody, and we're just gonna do what we do every time. And um, let's go to sector three, and I think this is where the math gets a little more important. And so we have a um, divide by eight. So the math here is two thirds of sector three and all of sector four. So sector three is 25. So 25 times two divided by three is 16 point blah, blah, blah. And then we have to add all of sector four, which is 10. But remember, it's cut in half when he's when they're going over a sector. So, so it's gonna be 10 divided by two, which is actually five. So it's gonna add five. So we're at 21, and then we divide it by the eight. That's a 2.7. So three units are getting hit. And it's nearest a black. And black was taken here, so we're now looking up here. This is an HQ, so he doesn't get hit. So we're going to disrupt this one for one. And there's two units here, so I'm going to disrupt them for two. Or can I disrupt this one instead? I'll disrupt this one for two. Okay, so uh, we had to go nearest to the black. 
So uh, that's it. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm trying not to take hits if I can from the artillery. I'll just take the disruptions. And now one thing you can do is, for example, if I wanted this unit to stay alive or non-disrupted because I want to take this thing out, I could have. But see, look, he's blocked anyway, so it's not that um, important. Then we go to the raid phase. And once again, raid is not happening. We did have one close call here. Um, when this unit's disrupted, he can't count it, so he has to go further, and there's two units back here, so he still can find two other units near him. Um, this one would fail a raid check, but there's no communication uh, there to a Japanese, so you can't trace communication from here to any of the black points. So uh, uh, that's where the, uh, the raid check is. So I do agree. Um, uh, some folks posted on BGG that they've never had a raid check happen, and neither have I because of the way I'm moving forward, and I'm sure other people are playing similarly. Um, I still think it's a cool rule, though, because it does prevent you from, from um, doing, a, doing a Leroy Jenkins and just trying to cut all the way across because these Sector 4s are empty, and it's like, okay, let's just start taking a bunch of empty spaces. Well, then you're going to get raided every step of the way. Um, I do think that's pretty cool. Um, so it prevents you from being gamey like that. And um, that brings us to the end of our turn. So we move to midday, and there is a landing. Amphibious landing. So let me get um, some shuffle shuffle going. And then we can uh, see what's happening with our landing here. Okay, so we have a lot of turns left. So I'm not uh, super concerned about uh, my progress. I think the thing I'm more concerned about is my losses. I've taken a lot of losses and um, had to reinforce them or replace them. Uh, this game, because of the catastrophic loss limit, is four until March 3rd or whatever, and then it drops to three. You really do have to re pair your guys. You can't just say, oh, I'll take the step loss and then just never and save the reinforcement points. you got to spend your reinforcement points, and that's a mistake um, you saw me make early on. I was trying to be more conservative, and you can't be conservative. You have to reinforce your guys. Um, I think the bigger thing is, is you have to eventually put them into the reserve box and let them regenerate points for you, um, which I'm hoping to do sometime soon. Uh, but that's the thing. Uh, this is, um, uh, it's got an interesting strategy to it. Uh, I'm, I'm finding it fascinating. So uh, let's do the mid. I just hate the rejuvenate rule. Um, and the missing dots. Okay, so we are on game turn 15. So four artillery points are being given to the VAC. So the VAC is um, the Marine Corps. So this is a separate uh, artillery, um, and they have four points now. And um, what's funny is I don't have a artillery used token for them. Um, so that part's interesting. They didn't give me an artillery used token for them, but I can tell you... I mean, I guess we could just use a smoke marker. Yeah, we'll use a smoke marker for their artillery use. It's just, it's funny how there's certain components that are just missing from this game. <laughs> okay, so the Marine Corps artillery is just like divisional artillery, except you can use it in any division, and it can do a four-strength barrage, which is better, right? Because we can maybe possibly take out a fort if all those planets align. Um, and I think we can combine a Marine Corps artillery with a divisional artillery. I think they can be combined together. And that's what, um, and then you can have a seven strength barrage. 
and that will help you take out these mega forts, right? Because uh, if you're seven or more strength, you don't shift to the left anymore. Um, so uh, let me make sure. Obviously, this is our first time we've had a Marine Corps artillery, but I do think you get to combine them together. That's the that's the key magic. They may be used with any of the three divisions. Yep. You may never assign more than three divisional and four core artillery points to the same attack. Do you see that? You can never do more than three divisional or four core. So what it's trying to say is you can't just spend six divisional points to do like a, a two barrages. You can, but not in the same barrage attack. You would have to resolve it as two separate attacks. What it's saying here is you can do... Um, you can combine them. So now we can do a mega artillery barrage, and that is where we get into some sweet daddy here. Um, so uh, that level three fort, for example, uh, these guys are, um, their days are numbered. Um, now here what's, here's what's crazy. If I do combine the artillery, even if I miss, I'm still attacking the fort. And normally we've been shifting one to the left and you gotta get the color to at least match, which is not too bad because when it's black, it's pretty easy to match the color. But this one here is actually red and that actually makes it harder to match the color. So this six strength one is actually better. So anyways, I'm not gonna belabor that. Um, that is the only thing that happens in the amphibious phase. So now we move to, uh, yeah, I believe we're moving to our event here. And it's a good event. We have a smoke event. So we like the smoke event. Um, I have red, purple, and brown. And so we have to smoke something in all three cases. And I'm seeing... Um, I think you have to be within two hexes. Let me look up the event. It's an awesome event no matter what. I'm just trying to really maximize this within two hexes. So uh, all our hexes live in Texas. And so what I'm going to do is we want to smoke this red one is what I want to do. So red for sure is smoked. Then this one I want to smoke. And I can do it because uh, brown is right here. So, so I'm going to smoke that one because of brown. And then I'm going to smoke this last one uh, because, oh, I wanted to do it because of purple. I can't. Oh, no. This one I can do because of brown. Brown's right here. And then this one I can do because of purple because purple's right there. So ding, ding, chicken dinner right there. So we got all of our black suppressed and all of the world is shouting with joy <laughs> that was a wonderful event now they do their uh, attack and so we have here uh this is a a gold but if there's a black nearby the black does the action instead of gold now um what's interesting is this black is not acting because there is no gold in well actually no there is a gold right here dang it okay so uh he does do it uh, he's doing an R action. Uh, remember, black fires anyways, so... Um, so an R action that's occupied is he's going to place a depth marker and then fire. Doesn't matter. Um, he can't get a depth marker. There aren't any left. He has smoke, so he can only hit around him. It's a circle... Um, uh, this one guy can get hit, which is unfortunate. Uh, this guy is in, he's not even in black fire range, so he can't get hit. These guys are intense, but now they're steady. So yes, I can hit a circle. 
and so it's going to hit oh come on it's just like one it's like dominoes where one falls and the next one falls so this smoke is not helping me as much as i thought Okay, so the smoke downgrades them, and I guess they weren't... No, they're disrupted. That means they're downgraded twice. There we go. There we go. He's not firing, because he's smoked and disrupted. That's what I was after. Okay, so black's not firing this turn, so nothing happens. And then uh, blue goes with an A action, and there's no blue here. Uh, that one's empty. And uh, let me just read what happens if A is empty. If A is empty on game turn 7, it's going to do an ambush. It's going to disrupt one unit within three hexes that match the symbol. So, uh, and it's a disruption. It's not a hit. So, uh, I think this guy is getting disrupted, is what is happening. And we have to do a green one, because it's happening this turn. So, he's being disrupted. And that's from this. There's an ambush. So, now we go... Uh, this guy's within three spaces, so he's ambushing. Um, he's already disrupted, so nothing happens. Uh, this one, we are in his field of fire, so let's see what happens with this one. He's going to fire, and if there's no artillery symbol, he's going to attack. So uh, he fires at circle and hits nobody, uh, and then he's going to attack, and um, he attacks the least pips, which is this one. So he's doing a um, assault. So here we go. Let's do it. He gets one for being Japanese. He gets one for close combat. We have four pips, so we get one for that. We uh, one for pip squeak, and we get one for um, having a flamethrower, and then we get one because it's a counterattack. We're next to other uh, infantry, so so we have support. So that means since it's a counterattack, we go first instead of them. So we draw, and it's a blue, because he came from blue. Uh, Conscript Surrender doesn't happen because he's an elite. But we do hit him, and so the first hit just disrupts him, and he loses a card. And then he goes, and he hits us, which is unfortunate. So we take a step loss. And we lose a card. And then this would have been nice. But then we go and he gets a reinforce, which is awful because now he's getting a card. He does not get the depth marker, I don't think. Um, I think he only gets that if it's his turn. He does get a depth marker. So he just got more powerful. Uh, so his depth marker is there. It's another CC. And now he goes and he hits us again. So we have a catastrophic loss situation. Uh, all because of this stupid event. Wow, that really hurt us. And this is a fourth division. So we have our second catastrophic loss. Um, and then uh, the unit stays alive. And he returns back to base with actually quite the success. He is disrupted, but he now has a depth marker in addition to what he used to have. And then we're disrupted too, even though we're near death there. So uh, that wasn't fun. Not real happy with that outcome. Uh, looking around to see if there's any other blues. And yes, there is. There's that one. So he's going to fire and then he's going to charge. And I'm looking at the fire chart here, and the uh, stars are immune, but I do have one unit that can get hit. So I do apply one hit. I had three uh, battalion, or, yeah, let me show you. 
These were the two that were gonna get hit. These are both stars. This one's a star, but the one below it was just a regular infantry. So then he goes after the least pips. This is six pips, and then this is two plus three. So he's going after this one, and he's gonna close combat us. So we come back here, and he just gets one for being Japanese, and that's it. Um, we have five pips, so we get one, and then we get one for the flamethrower, and we get one because we're counterattacking. We are next to units, so we go first. It's blue. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Hit. We actually destroyed him. So he basically uh, kamikaze himself. And uh, we did take an initial hit from his fire, uh, but uh, that was it. Um, so then, you know, what sucks is it's empty. So it's like, well, let's just go take it. And now we're going to have to draw a card and deal with all the counterattack and stuff that could happen. Um, so very bizarre. Uh, okay, I think that's it with the actions, which that part's good. So now we draw another event, and there's going to be a Japanese depth added somewhere. And I'm looking around, and I think there's only one candidate. Um, well, actually, there's two. They're both red. So this guy can do it. He's a G3, and this one's an E3. So E3 gets it. So we go grab a depth marker, and he gets depth. Like that. Now, the tank, he will move whenever there's a purple action. So there wasn't a purple, so that's why he didn't do anything. There is a red circle on the tank, and if you're wondering what that is, sometimes the tank can be on a position that's not, like the tank can be out here and not actually on a position. And if that's the case, then the tank would use the red circle. Um, and if you're ever doing close combat with a tank, etc., he might use his red circle instead of wherever he came from. Okay, <clears throat> we're ripping. Now we're to our action. And from a 5th Division perspective, we need to take Suribachi down. Everywhere else, I think we're okay. Uh, I know this is a problem child as well, but um, it's not a hilltop, so I'm not going to be as concerned yet. Uh, and we keep getting disrupted there, so that's also an issue. Uh, but that's what happens when you get near black, and we are taking on a lot of fortresses all at once, which uh, is increasing my losses. So um, I think let's start with the area that's probably the easiest, and we're going to start up here. And yes, I am going to go in with this unit. So we're going to move in, and then let's not draw a blue. And uh, if we don't draw a blue, uh, we're going to be fine. And... There's no blue. So uh, we got lucky there. Uh, the, um, we needed that. This guy, we're gonna do a move to here to help out with this red. And in this red, I think we're gonna attack it to reveal it. Um, so let's do that. And it's a, it needs to be flanked. Well, we don't flank it. But we were um, three to one, and so it's an unrevealed depth marker, so it gets reduced to two to one, so his depth marker is destroyed. I do appreciate that. I mean, we're able to destroy... No D-Day game prior to this let you destroy depth markers so easily. Um, so that part I appreciate. So as long as you have triple his strength, you can still uh, flummox him and get rid of his depth marker uh, uh, quite easily. So... Very appreciative of that. Um, this guy is built for close combat, but I'm concerned about leaving the space. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him. This is already disrupted, so I'm going to just plow right over him. One, two, three. We're going to go up and try to take on that tank. The engineer needs to go with him, but what I'm going to do then is then move this unit here on the spot and now I'm going to move the engineer. <laughs> I know it's silly and it's stupid, uh, but um, uh, I successfully avoided the rejuvenation check by doing that. So if you stagger your moves, uh, this reminds me of that um, the thing with the rings, you know, where um, you start with all the rings where uh, the biggest rings on the bottom and the smallest rings on the top, and you got to move it 
you know, there's three slots, A, B, and C, and you got to move it uh, from A to somewhere else. <laughs> and you can never have a ring that's bigger than the other. I mean, that's, that's how this feels. Um, but anyways, I can game it. Uh, so I'm going to just stagger my move and move them in two pieces. And there is no rule that says you, you move a stack as a whole. As long as they're in command, they all get actions. So, um, uh, so I can do that as long as they're in command. And so I just did. Anyway, so neener, neener. <laughs> I just did it. All right, so um, we have a lot more to do here. Uh, now, I am potentially running out of command. So I do have to be mindful because this, um, this command post is pretty far back. And um, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack it up and I'm going to move it one, two, three to here. And uh, everybody's going to get their moves or whatever in first. But I think I have to because I don't think that I was in command with some of these units. Uh, this HQ, by the way, is the 2nd Battalion 26. So he does command both of these units, so I can move them both. So I will at least move this one here, and then he's going to move himself uh, to there. Uh, but that's the situation. And then I have... Um, uh, I already moved him here. Um, I'm actually okay with the 23rd being here. I just got to be careful with, like, see here, I'm moving my 23rd units way up there, and I need to uh, be careful. Uh, this is a 23rd HQ, and he's out of command right now. Um, uh, he does command himself and people around him. Uh, oh, right here. Here's the HQ unit. So they are commanding themselves and the people around them. Uh, so it's not like they're not helping, uh, but we have to be careful because the 23rd regiment is here. And so these 23rd infantry need to, uh, break away and come down here and take on black. That's what I need to do. Uh, but this guy is the one that did the attack, so I can't do it with him. And then the disrupted markers just go away. So I can't do anything but the disrupted guys, of course. Uh, so I do have this situation where this guy is disrupted and he has smoke and he can hurt us badly and I'm not able to attack him. Um, he did not fire because he was disrupt. Well, he fires even when he's disrupted, but he got downgraded twice. So I'm assuming he lost his disruption marker. I'm assuming they all did. So uh, we do need to re-disrupt him. The only units that can do it is this one and this one, and I will do that. I'm going to attack it again, and of course I'm going to disrupt it. Um, and then nothing happens to me uh, in the process. This one here, I'm going to reveal him with this unit, and he's just going to attack with himself. Let me get the camera here. So these two units here are going to attack by themselves. And you can see I need a Browning and a Bazooka, and I have both. Uh, this guy is a strength 3, and we are strength 11, so we more than triple him. He's obliterated. Gone. All right, and so then um, we're going to do the same uh, silly trick where I'm going to move units piecemeal. Uh, actually... Um, this was supposed to get a garrison, so we're okay with this one. So I'm going to move one, two, three to here, and now we got to do a check for red. And there is no red, so we were able to take the spot, and we did destroy an artillery in the process. So we were able to get red out of here, destroyed the artillery, and it's not... A hilltop, but he does lose a point. Sorry for the bump there. Okay. Now, that one is getting far from his uh, HQ. So, I'm assuming he has an HQ with him. No, they don't. So, they're uh, falling out of uh, their HQ command range. Uh, the one HQ that does command them is here. Or, this is actually the 21st.
So this guy wants to do some close combat. So he's plowing forward. We obviously have this one here, which is a, an issue. So we're gonna plow forward one, two, and I'm actually gonna go in. Well, should I? Yeah, I'm gonna go in for three. So we need to not draw a gold, and we didn't. So we just took another spot, and um, uh, hold on. We're gonna have to do an infiltration fire because this was, nope, he has muff. And this one blocks, ah, sorry. This guy here was preventing his muff from reaching out here, so we don't have to do a muff check. So see, you can avoid muff checks as long as you get somebody up against them. Um, and that's where I think you gotta use your heavy weapons and your star, the guys with the stars, because they're more immune to the intense fire, so you get them up, cancel the muff, and then you move everybody else in. Um, that's been the strategy so far. It works pretty well. Now these guys are super powerful, and they're with the, this one's with the 23rd, that one's with the 25th. Uh, the 23rd is up here, the 25th is down there, so I'm tempted to split them apart. And in fact, I'm going to, this one's gonna go one, two, three, like that, and then this one, I'm gonna do one, two, three, and we're gonna take this one, and I got a draw, and I do get a blue, so now I do an intense fire check. And it's a leader. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we do take a hit. There's nothing I can do. Uh, he takes a hit. And then on top of it, we have to draw a unit and uh, choose whether we're going to close combat it. And I think I have to. Oh, you know what? I couldn't have done this. I'm sorry. My apologies. I can't do this. This is all illegal. I did this, I went one, two, three, thinking we had this, we don't. This is enemy controlled, I have to go around him. So uh, the best I can do is just a one right now. I also have to worry about my command range. Um, now this HQ can command him, so actually I can do a two, three. And then we have to do a check here because we're within three spaces of him. So there is no red, so he does not get a, a unit. Um, my two tanks are here. They cannot reach him for a barrage, so I gotta move in. So I am gonna move in for the kill. Uh, well, actually, these two here are going to attack, so let's reveal. Um, actually, we can't reveal that yet. we got to reveal this. Nope, it's a double fort, so let's reveal this one. And we can attack from that direction, so we I got super lucky with the attack direction. And yes, now we can reveal it, and you can see it's a two, and we meet all of the requirements for this, because these guys have bazooka, etc. And... Um, this guy is tripling him, so he's a six. And then he adds three more for nine. So that's the situation. And it is a rocky position, so we're cut in half. So we're at 12, but we're down to six. So we're actually a one to two, but we do meet the requirements. And uh, it's an AD slash R. So the depth gets revealed, uh, and we're disrupted is basically what happens. And so we're the ones disrupted, but we sort of expected that. So we finally got this guy revealed is the, the bigger thing. And um, he's actually pretty easy to take out if we have the right strength. Um, although that CC is a problem. Uh, okay, so we're moving in for the kill. Uh, these guys aren't black, so they don't fire every round. So that's a little easier. And I'm moving my tanks in. That's the big thing. These tanks are moving in. And now they're in range. That's the big thing I needed to make room for. This is another close combat guy. I would like to get into position. So this, since this is disrupted, we're going to just plow right over him and get here. And we are protecting him. He's disrupted. He can't move, uh, but he's going to no longer be a target. Uh, we do have a blue here from the 25th. And so I can move him to there just so he can provide more 
HQ coverage. This one's from the 21st, so we're gonna go up and take on black. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, like this, to take on black, and then this is another one from the 21st, and we're gonna do one, two, three, like so. Um, I have some guys in the back here that I'm just gonna move forward. Oh, I don't want to lose this spot. So, uh, actually, I think this spot can get a garrison. I haven't been really doing the garrison check, so please accept my apologies there. Uh, so, anyways, we're, um, I think we're golden with that. So we got this side done. This black is a problem child. These guys are just tough, but I think we got the right units to take them out. Uh, up north... I think we're we're steamrolling the north, but they are being annoying, and they are applying hits to us. And with them applying hits to us, we got to be careful because we uh, could take catastrophic losses or lose a lot of reinforcements. <clears throat> and I just remembered, I moved tanks up here. So this tank and this tank over here, that one right there, um, we're bombing him. And so I gotta decide if we're gonna do a diamond or a triangle. I don't know which one. Uh, we'll just do whatever's on top. We'll do the triangle. And uh, he's a black space. So let's see what we get. Uh, we do have the triangle. And then uh, blue is three spaces away from him. So we gotta hit. This one's actually harder to hit. Actually, no, gold's next to him, too. So we hit him with either one. So this is a perfect hit. He is a black space, but he's not a hill fort. So we actually do this here, and it's a perfect match. So we disrupt him, which is good. I guess we didn't need to attack him. Oh, yeah, if you attack him, you can't disrupt him. So we're sorry about that, folks. Um, we got to cancel the attack. Um, we need to destroy the fort. So uh, screw the attack thing, and I'm really sorry, and we're talking about this one right here. You can't attack and barrage in the same turn, and I attacked him so I could disrupt him. That's a stupid thing. I need to get this thing destroyed, so I would have barraged him. Uh, yeah, uh, especially knowing uh, it, with a six strength barrage, I'm not shifting left. All I needed to do was match something. I, I, I'm sorry, that's a total renege. I already know the outcome. And I know some people can be very angry that I didn't uh, think it through, um, but I just now realize that I have tanks and, and you can't attack and barrage. I, I'm so sorry, but we're doing this instead. Um, so he is disrupted from that. The artillery would be destroyed if he has any, and he does. See, that's the other reason I wanna do the barrage. It's way better than just attacking to get a disruption and nothing else. So his artillery is destroyed. And that's another uh, point lost for him. And uh, on top of that, his depth marker is destroyed. I don't think he has one. Nope, he doesn't have one. And then we get a chance to destroy the fort. This is so much better of an outcome than just simply attacking him. And, um, oh, it's this purple and it's, see, there's no match. So we didn't get the fort. Um, so now we gotta gear ourselves up to hit him. So instead of doing the attack, what I can do is move one of these units up so now we can uh, do a close combat or something in the future. And if you look here, uh, he can be attacked from this side too. And so the ideal thing is I want to do a close combat with maybe this guy, but I haven't just, I keep getting disrupted. So um, my apologies, um, because the tank barrage thing is important. And I, uh, I made a big mistake there. Now, um, we can barrage this guy. Uh, we revealed him through an attack. Actually, we know we can't. Boy, why am I constantly forgetting that rule? You can't barrage and attack the same turn, period. <laughs> um, so uh, we can't do anything about the quarry at this turn. Uh, we have plenty of artillery points, though. And so uh, we may want to consider something else. And um, I'm looking, 
We're in midday. We have plenty of artillery points. So I'm gonna take the fourth Marines and we're gonna artillery uh, this tank right here. So I'm gonna spend three points. We're up to six total spent and we're gonna draw. And the diamond is the artillery symbol and the tank is on a purple. So we, we hit them perfect with a three strength. And it says that any artillery there would be destroyed and we disrupt him. The disruption is what I was after. Uh, let's see if there was an artillery there. Uh, no, no artillery. Disrupting the tank is huge because we don't want that tank running amok. Okay, so now we go over here. And yes, I am barraging first. <laughs> we're, not, we're not playing around um, with attacks. We're barraging first. Uh, this unit here, uh, I would, he's a pesky one, but we got disrupted all around. Uh, I can barrage this one, and I will. This one I need to worry about as well, but I'm more worried about this one. And so we're going to barrage him with our Marine Corps. So we're going to spend three from the fifth. And then we're going to spend all four from the VAC. And so uh, in doing so, uh, we're going to take this guy out. Uh, so that's a seven strength barrage, which means we're not going to shift left. Because remember, he's on a hilltop. And so um, our artillery, by the way, is a diamond. It always is a diamond. And we get a diamond. And then the gold here is a perfect, uh, that's a perfect hit. So we destroy, uh, he's disrupted. It's a capital D. So all units are disrupted. Um, and then the artillery is destroyed, which has been done already. And then let's see if we, uh, it's actually down here. Uh, if he has a depth marker, it would have been removed. But let's see if we can get the uh, fort. And we drew a red and it's a perfect match. So the fort is reduced to a class three. So now we're a class three, and that's the situation with the fort. He's very susceptible to attack, and um, that was a beautiful barrage. Okay, so now I'm going to barrage this guy with my two tanks, and we're going to do the circle. So it's a red circle. Couldn't have been any more perfect. And so once again, um, he's disrupted, which is the outcome I really wanted. And now let's see if we can get that fort reduced. Um, it's a orange and there is no match. Um, the orange don't, doesn't match. So the fort is not reduced. So I have two more tanks somewhere. I think it's here. And these guys are triangles, if I remember. So we're going to barrage this one and we got a red, but not the triangle. And that should be enough. Fire color only is still enough. So let's see if we reduce it. We drew a green and there's no match. So the fort holds. Okay, I can close combat this fort to get it destroyed, but I can only go from this angle and I can't go with a tank. So if I do close combat, I have to leave my tank behind and I'm not sure I wanna do that. I'll think about it. Um, but I am gonna close combat this guy and I can do it with this unit right here. So we have our heavy weapon and our HQ, which I know is only three pips. But we're gonna go in and close combat this guy. And um, he gets one for, two for being Japanese. Uh, the fortification marker counts as a unit. Um, and then uh, that's it. He doesn't have uh, anything else that, oh, he's on a hilltop. So he gets one for the terrain. All right, so we get one for our pip squeaks. And then we get one for flamethrower and we get one for the hero. So we do go up to three. And I think that's all we get. Uh, so it is an evenly matched battle. Uh, this may not be a smart move. So uh, he, he is disrupted. And that's the important part here. Um, since he's disrupted, where did his disruption marker go? Um, every hit we do is going to impact him. So uh, first thing we do is draw for him. 
Uh, oh, we gotta draw see what color he is because he's a black position. So we're gonna do purple, okay? Purple is the color we're trying to match. So we draw and it's not a purple. Let me back up so you can see better. Not a purple. So now we go, oh, sweet daddy, we get a purple. This is what we want. So first thing you do is you kill the unit. So the unit is killed and this unit is out of the game. Okay, so now all that's left is the fortress. And uh, he does lose a card, which was a purple. That was great. This is working out. And all we need to do is not get hit one more time and we get hit. So um, I'm gonna hit the HQ unit because that's cheaper to replace than the uh, heavy weapons. We do lose a card, which unfortunately was a purple, but that, oh no, that would have helped us so much. Okay, so then we go and we get a purple. And we actually destroyed the fortress uh, because class three is the last level and we actually claimed it. So now, just like you always see those Marines hoisting the flag up over Sarabachi, did I, I hope I got the reference right. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the mountain that that occurred on. And I think, if I remember correctly, the war went on for weeks afterwards and this, this is very thematic. I, I just I really appreciate it. And we are finally on that freaking hilltop and black is eliminated. So um, unfortunately, these two still count as uh, communication for them, uh, but we did take out black. Um, and the hero uh, did give us an extra card. That hero doesn't help us that much uh, in that situation. What I'm finding more and more is that heroes are, uh, are less helpful as every uh, iteration of D-Day goes on. In Omaha Beach, heroes were everything. Uh, in Tarawa, they were still extremely valuable. In Peleliu, they were almost worthless. And um, I'm not saying they're worthless here, but uh, they're not that great. Um, uh, although the NCO ones are better. I, I have a rifleman, which isn't quite as good. Um, but anyways, I'm not trying to complain. I just, uh, I'm just making a mental observation. Uh, but that was huge. So we're finally, um, I'm, I'm happy. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um, as far as artillery goes, where are the other artillery points? That one. So did I not destroy artillery here? I guess I haven't. I disrupted him, but I didn't destroy artillery. Man, I can't remember. This would be very important to remember. <laughs> okay, so I can try to close combat him. Or I'm going to do this and... See, this guy's disrupted. And he was disrupted this turn, so I can't move him over. Um, and then this one has a block situation, so I can't attack from here on there. Um, I want to take out purple and blue. See, I have sector one with six artillery points. And did I forget to remove artillery points somehow? Because uh, I'm, I'm not seeing where the six artillery points are coming from. There's three right there. And this would have been six, and this would have been nine, and this would have been 12. And the thing is, is I control everything uh, oh, you know what? I never destroyed this artillery. I'm on the space, so I know it's destroyed. So he actually loses three more artillery points. That's what I was looking for. He's down to three. Okay, um, so this is a conundrum. Uh, do I take this? He is disrupted, so he can't fire at all. He's not a black position, so he doesn't have all those superpowers that everybody else has. So I am going to move here. I have an engineer unit with him, so I can move along the rocks. And uh, we do have to draw for the rejuvenation, and so, of course, that happens. And now we draw for intense fire. It's not blue, so he misses the intense fire. But we do have to draw a unit. And we get an elite here, and we will close combat him. So he gets one for being Japanese, and then we get, um, we're going to get five. And it's blue. He goes... And then we go, and he's dead. Uh, there is a naval artillery blast. We're technically supposed to resolve that first. 
So we drew a triangle and that could be a problem. Uh, we have no triangle, so we got lucky. So he's dead in multiple ways there. And uh, now he does have communication. He has communication here and here, and he would retreat to either of them. Uh, however, it's full, so he just goes back into the reserve pool. So he's not quite out of the game. Uh, but we do take a seven. And I could at least move these guys down, which then creates... Uh, so what I would do is I would move one and then move one of these so I don't violate stacking and then move the other one and then move this one. <laughs> so I would do that uh, so I don't have to do the rejuvenation check. And um, that opens up some doors. Uh, these guys have already acted, so I can't do anything with them. I can move in and give some more support, so I will do that with this unit. Uh, this is a big stack that's been just begging to attack something, and I need to clear these guys out to move him in, but I haven't been able to uh, because I'm disrupted. So I got to remove disruption from all three of these, but the beauty is I am no longer... Uh, gonna take a pounding over there I think um, so that ends our turn so now we do artillery check he has three artillery points he's only gonna devote two-thirds to himself so three times two is six divided by three he's gonna have two points um, two divided by nine is zero because we round to the nearest whole number um, so not even close to uh, so nobody gets hit in sector one anymore in sector two, I just leave the disrupted marker there. Um, I don't even have to calculate that one anymore. And then we go to sector three, which did get reduced to 23. So uh, he's 23 times two divided by three. That's a 15 and, and some change. And then we have the sector four is gonna help with five more points. So we're at 20 points for sector three. And then, uh, oh, look at this. No artillery! <laughs> so nothing happens to us. That was that was sweet daddy right there. Okay, so um, we do a raid check, and I'm just telling you right now, there is no raid issues, so let's move on. And that ends our turn. I think I started this turn at 15 minutes in, because uh, we spent 15 minutes of this video finishing the last turn, and I just want to say for the record, I am at one hour exactly. So I may have actually done this turn in 45 minutes. So I shaved 15 minutes off. So yes. <laughs> um, we move to the night phase and I will um, uh, do another. So I'm going to end here and I will see you in a few seconds. Stay awesome. Thanks for joining me.